Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 13 Beta 3. I have it installed on my Pixel 6 Pro to show you each and every new change. And I'm going to also compare it against the previous build to give you a clear idea about the new changes. Before starting, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about my upcoming videos. And now, let's jump in. Let's start with the lock screen. On the left, I have Beta 3 and on the right, I have Beta 2. The first change here in the lock screen is the slower animation you get when you unlock the device. So let me show you first Beta 2. This is how it looks and this is how Beta 3 looks like. So as you see, it's smoother and slower than the previous version. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the lock screen. Now let's move on to the home screen. And the first obvious change is the home navigation bar is now wider and thicker than before. And as you see here, it looks totally different and all the icons and widgets are now shifted slightly towards the top to give more space for the new nav bar. While I think it looks better than before, but it's worse in certain scenarios. So for example, when I open Facebook on both versions, as you see, the black bar at the bottom of the screen is even bigger. Let's go back to the home screen to show you even more. And now the font used in the app shortcuts menu looks smaller to me and also the icons showing here next to widgets and pause. As you see, they are smaller now in beta 3. Next, the drop targets are slightly better now as well. So if you take a look here, when I tap and hold on the Facebook app, if you take a look at the top, you will see the drop targets are closer to each other. Uh, and in a different scenario, they are the opposite. So for example, when I try to hold one of the suggested apps here in the app drawer, as you see, there is a bigger margin between the two. And now it's time for today's sponsor. If you are interested to purchase original Windows 10 and Office keys, head over to cdkeyoffer.com using the links in the description below, then apply my special promo code ID20 to get extra 25% discount. Windows 10 OEM key will cost you $16.23, which is very affordable. To complete your purchase, choose your preferred payment method, input the details, and once the payment is done, you will be redirected to the orders screen. To view your code, click on the view keys slash codes button, then click on get the key. To activate your Windows 10 OEM key, copy the code from the website, head over to your Windows settings, then system, scroll all the way down and click on about, then product key and activation, and finally click on a change. Paste the code in the text field and click on next, then activate, and now your original Windows key got activated. For more offers, please check the links in the description below. And now let's get back to the review. Now let's move on to the system-wide search and it got a lot of new changes. The first one is under home settings. The search your phone menu is back again. And when you go inside, you will see simplified options. Only one toggle for people and one for web suggestions and all the rest are now gone. There is also a new menu item called web suggestion settings. Tapping on it will simply take you to the settings page of the Google app. It doesn't do that much. So let's take a look at what's inside the search itself. First of all, now when you search for anything like Android 13, for example, at the very bottom, you will see more than one shortcut that takes you to different apps. So you can uh, search in YouTube, you can search on Maps, Play Store and settings, which is something we didn't have before. And there are some visual changes too. So here's the previous version. And as you see here, when I tap on the X, there is no animation. But here when I tap on it, it will give you this nice animation around the button. You will also notice the apps are now showing at the top and the results at the bottom. While in beta 2, it's the other way around. Also the text that says search apps, web and more is now fitting inside the text box instead of being hidden. Also the Google logo now supports material you instead of using the normal one in beta 2. And lastly, the mic icon is gone from beta 3. And because now we have the option to search for people, so you will start to see contacts from various apps and conversations as well. But there is also a new section here called from this device to separate between the web results and your local results. Let me also show you how the shortcuts work. So I'm going to search for Android 13 and also try to search for this video on YouTube. As you see here, you will get instant results. Let me also try to search for an app here like maybe Asphalt 9 and tap on the Play Store. As you see, it will do the same thing. So this is a really nice touch. 
And one of the things I didn't mention about Android 13 in my previous videos is the ability to drag the search results and pin it to your home screen. So this is one of the examples here. You can do it like this. And as you see, you can get back to it whenever you want. The other thing you can do is the ability to report any search result by tapping and holding on it. As you see, you can tap on report this. And when it comes to your search history, you can tap and hold on any and you will see this new delete bubble that will allow you to, to delete the history. Next, the wallpaper and the style app got a new icon when you try to change wallpaper and if your app doesn't have access to your photos, you will see a new icon over here and this is how it looks on the previous version. Now let's move on to the notifications shade and the first change is the new notification dot that appears next to the active apps and once you check what active apps you have and then go back, the notification dot will disappear. Not only this, but you will also see a new description text here at the top that didn't exist in the previous version. So if you take a look here, it says, even if you are not using these apps, they are still active and might affect your battery life. And this text doesn't exist in beta 2. The second change is in the home controls page. Now the big and the misaligned arrows we used to have in beta 2 are now gone and they are replaced with small arrows. Change number three is in the build number. As you see here on the left, it says 13 instead of Tramiso, and that makes the build number looks shorter. Talking about the notifications, once you install beta three and expand your notifications shade, you will see this one coming from Android system and it says review notification settings. The description says starting in Android 13, apps that you install need your permission to send notifications tap to change this permission for existing apps and you can simply tap on it and it will take you to the app notifications page under settings. Next, Google Assistant. And now you will see a slightly different wave form. So I will start Google Assistant on both. As you see, the new one is shorter and also shifted towards the top instead of showing at the edge of the screen. Now let's talk about the new changes under settings and the first one is under connected devices and then connection preferences. And now you will see the fast pair option is now gone from beta three. The second change is under display and then display size and text. When you scroll all the way down, you will see a redesigned reset settings button. Last but not least under security and when you tap on the gear icon next to screen lock, if you have a pattern already set on the device instead of the passcode, now there is a toggle called mark pattern visible that you can turn off if you want to hide it. This option already exists in the in beta 2, but I think I missed it in my previous videos, so I thought of sharing it with you. Now let's talk about the performance and the stability of this build and I have to say it feels great. The performance is perfect. I didn't spot any major bugs while recording the video and everything is very responsive. Also, I don't see any shutter lag while using the device. It feels exactly the same as June 2022 stable version. The only thing I spotted here when I play a YouTube video in picture in picture and then tap on the headset icon to hide the video. The media controls doesn't appear in the notifications shade, but other than this, it works perfectly well. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes in Android 13 beta three. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.